how does a um, organization work with AI like you, Futurist? So, I, you know, I, again, I think this is the tip of the iceberg for this field. Um, we're seeing some really easy entry points in AI, and I speak on this topic a lot. I, you know, it's exciting that four years ago, I think I gave my first presentation on the future of generosity and AI, and people looked at me like, what are you even doing here? Like, I had four heads, and like, it was just, people were not ready for it. And yeah. now, you know, and and frankly, I remember after one presentation, someone said, well, this is great, but are there any real-world examples of how this is being done? And, and mm-hmm. frankly, at the time, there weren't. There, there were really none. And it's exciting because McKinsey did a report last year that where they found 25 examples of AI in the social sector, and it's growing exponentially. So there's organizations now like uh, Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center up in mm. Seattle, or you can make a donation using Alexa. Um, so you just say, hey, Alexa, make a donation to the Hutch, and you know the, it will do that. And so that's a form of AI. And um, it's become within reach. Like, our company does deep learning models um, for organizations that have lots of data and uh, and lots of constituents and want to narrow in. But we're also just finishing um, and getting ready to launch five models that um, are not based on wealth data, but based on like uh, national data in the consumer files, so census data and things like that. So we have... Um, access to 300 data points on every adult in America now that we're using to model attributes of generous people. So we just built these five models they are going to be released later this month and that these models will be available to purchase very cheaply by like a local food bank or a Boys and Girls Club or or any small nonprofit that can't afford what we we normally charge, which is, you know, fifty to $100,000 a year for our, our custom models. Well, these will be a few thousand dollars for a whole year. They won't. They won't be as accurate, but they will. There is national data, um, and even self-reported data from census and other things that help us understand what do what do um, givers look like. Um, so there will be many, many more examples in the near future. And then for nonprofits in the data um, or in the program, the service delivery, there's lots of application of AI um, in in nonprofits delivering their mission whether it's delivering blood by drones in um, Africa through a company called Zipline. Um, they actually they, they get an order for blood through a mobile phone. They put it on a drone that they launch. It flies over a remote spot that workers could not get to and drops the blood with a parachute in the specific quantity and type that's needed for that patient. Since wow. they've been operating, they haven't had a single quart of blood go bad since they've started working from this kind of hub and spoke um, thing. And so there, it's happening all over in real time. It's really exciting to see how this will improve the human race um, in a pretty significant way, in an efficient way. That's absolutely awesome. I love that example. So for nonprofits who are listening, what should they be keeping their eyes and ears out for in order to be able to obtain access to some of these models that you're mentioning? Is it through donor search that you're able to do this partnership or are you working with other um, companies that are in, uh, you know, that are national and able to help facilitate this learning? So um, there are several companies that are, you know, private companies that are doing AI in the nonprofit space. You have to be very selective. And of course, I'm super biased because after sitting in the fundraising seat for 20 years, I really look at it through the lens of, is this AI going to improve a relationship with Mm -hmm. an organization? Like, is it going to foster or deepen uh, a new relationship or an existing relationship? And that, to me, is the basis of anything, any evaluation you're going to do, like good or bad AI rests in this idea of, does this help foster a better relationship? Right. If you're looking at things that will automate and AI can automate things all day long, Amazon automates the delivery of, you know, what, what you're buying, but also like they have robots pick your stuff up and put it in boxes, which is why they can do this so efficiently and fast. Anything that automates philanthropy, I, I really have a hard time with. Like I, I feel like philanthropy is at risk of becoming more transactional. Mm. Um, and, and, and this idea of automating things through AI will make it more transactional. And I really believe in that relational side of philanthropy that 
we talk about partnership, we talk about trust, we talk about this, you know, community that comes together for the long top and long haul. Um, so I would just, I, I, you know, if you're evaluating, you know, someone to do AI, ask yourself the question, does it bring me in closer relationship with the donor or does it just help me bring in more money? And I feel like there's this trade-off between short-term revenue and long-term relationships. And so that's the, the the dichotomy that nonprofits should really wrestle with as they're they're thinking through things. Um, of course, I'm always I love having these conversations with people that are trying to answer difficult questions, uh, whether it's us that helps them or or helping them connect with other organizations. Um, Google and Microsoft, um, Amazon all have amazing um, grant and um, uh, basically free uh, consulting and free a- AI support for nonprofits. So, you know, if you're looking at solving a difficult problem, there's money and resources out there that are available, which is really exciting. It's awesome. Yeah. And do you have any um, thoughts on how they would approach that request to some of those big dogs, the big corporations? I'll have formal process. So Microsoft has the uh, Microsoft Impact Challenge, um, mm-hmm. or I think it's Microsoft uh, Microsoft good, I think. And then, uh, I think, um, Google is the, uh, annual impact challenge. So I think last year they awarded $25 million to nonprofits that were solving, um, trying to solve problems. And about half of those nonprofits have never done anything with AI before. Um, so the grant money, you just have to go to those organizations and it makes sense. I mean, most of those organizations are under a lot of pressure mm. to do good. Yeah. And, you know, AI is scary for a lot of people and a lot of unanswered questions around ethics of AI and how does that shake out in the private sector and the nonprofit sector. Yes. And um, so they're each, each of those big, I would say Amazon, Google, Microsoft, they have dedicated websites for nonprofits and, um, and, and they Facebook made the too, process fairly easy to, to access. With this latest valuable episode, we'd love to thank you for joining us on the Creating Community for Good podcast. If you found today's show valuable, simply visit our website, creatingcommunityforgood.com to leave a review as well as to get access to additional resources and relevant links from this show. Stay tuned for more episodes.